Hello and welcome to this course introductory video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the expectations for writing university mathematics assignments. And in general, they're different from what you would have been expected to do for high school level mathematics assignment. And they're much more like what's expected in the rest of the university, what's expected in the arts and the sciences for references, for, for professionalism. So you should think of a math assignment as something that's like an essay or a lab report or a thesis project much more than it is like a high school math assignment. I'm going to start with one basic idea and an assignment is a clear and clean presentation of your own arguments and ideas about a set of mathematical problems. And there's a bunch of stuff in this that I want to use to to describe what my expectations are, what these terms mean for your writing. And I'm going to go through a long list of expectations that get into the ideas of this basic idea, but it all comes back to this, I think, reasonable definition of what an assignment should be. Clean and clear. So it should be clean, legible, well-organized. Don't hand in assignments that have material that's scratched out. Don't hand in things that are out of order. To that end, usually when you're doing rough work, you're going to have a bunch of stuff that's scratched out. You're going to do things out of order. So don't expect to hand in the first pa paper you start writing on. Like everything in the university, a good mathematics assignment requires drafts. So expect to do rough work, figure out what you're going to say, figure out what your solutions look like, and then write them in an organized good copy that's clear, clean, and legible. You need to annotate your calculations. Almost always, just a string of calculations without any words around them are not acceptable. There's not enough context there. It's not an argument. It's not clear what you're trying to accomplish with that. You need to have words and sentences around your calculations telling the reader me or the grader in the course, what you're actually trying to accomplish with those calculations. As a rule of thumb, you should think of a math assignment as being 50% words and sentences and 50% calculation. That can go up and down depending on the individual assignment, but that's a good place to start with. Uh, a little particular thing, usually in my classes you can leave your answers in exact values. So in exact values I want to write root 5 instead of the approximate value 2.236. There are some places where I actually do care about approximate values, but the vast majority of the time, it's much, much better to leave things in exact value. There are many calculation tools in the world, your calculators, things in your own computer, and then things online like Desmos and Symbol Lab and Wolfram Alpha. Those are great, but you have to indicate the use of them. So if you're using a calculation tool to check your work or to do calculations, you need some sort of short indication that you've used that tool. A lot of the things on this page I'm going to talk about in more detail in the Academic Honesty video as well, including cite your sources. You need to cite your sources. If you're using sources, particularly internet sources, you need to cite them in a math assignment exactly the same way you would in an English essay. If you go on to the internet or read another book and you find a different way of doing the problem that I've assigned for you that perhaps uses different notations, you need to explain those notations and those methods and need to tell me why this different method that you found actually applies to the question that I've assigned you. You can't assume that I or whoever's grading your work knows all the possible alternative notations and methods. If you're using the method from the course, that's great. And if you find something else, that's also great. You just have to give context for it. Again, you have to think of an assignment as an argument you're making and that argument can't assume that your reader already knows what's going on. You need to make the argument. Collaboration with groups is great, but make sure when you're collaborating, at the end of the day, you still do your own work. So work with a group, figure out things together, but then go back on your own, write your own assignment, write your own calculations, write your own sentences. Um, collaborative work should never look like carbon copies. One assignment is exactly the same as another. If you're going to be late, let me know as soon as you can. If you have reasons, emergency, medical, whatever, that's fine. We can deal with that. But it's really nice to know as soon as possible that an assignment's not going to be submitted online, preferably by email. For online submissions, please submit one PDF scan. And that's just for ease of dealing with all the various files that come in. We want your assignment to be one file. Again, questions in order, nice and clean and neatly laid out. And we want to use PDF format. If you're doing a scanned assignment and you also have references, you can submit a second text document with those references in addition to the PDF. 
so that you don't have to actually write out URLs. That's unreasonable. So um, a second document of references and citations is certainly fine in addition to a PDF scan of your pen and paperwork. I want to give some examples of a couple of these ideas so that it's clear what I mean when, I, when I'm talking about, say, annotate your calculations. So let's start there. So let's have a question where I want to solve the system. I'm going to deal with this for a couple of slides, so I'll put it up over there on the left. And for all these examples, I'm going to give you a poor solution, and then I'm going to give you a better solution. So here's the poor solution. This is a correct solution. Nothing here is wrong. In fact, they end up with exactly the right numbers. This is the correct solution. But I would not give this full marks because it is not a full and complete argument. Even though it ends up with the correct numbers, this assignment hasn't told me that it understands what's going on. It hasn't communicated to me how it's actually going through things. What do I mean by annotate? Well, let's look at the same solution, but with annotations. So I'm now going to walk through more or less exactly the same steps that were on the previous slide. But now I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. So, so I'm going to first solve for x in the first equation. So first equation over here, if I solve for x, I get 1 minus y. Then I'm going to put that in the second equation. So replace x in the second equation, I get this expression. Now I can solve for y in that expression. And I can put this y into the third equation and get this expression. This expression now only involves z's. So I can solve for z, I get z equals 1 half. And then I can put that in the previous expression I had involving y and z, y equals 1 plus z. This is one of the things I had on the previous page. So I can put this 1 half in there, so 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. And then I can use the first equation again to solve for x in terms of y. So x is 1 minus y, I know y is a 3 halves. So I get that x is 1 minus 3 halves is negative 1 halves. And that gives me, in fact, the full solution. So exactly the same steps. But now I have annotations. And the level at which you annotate things is certainly a matter of judgment. This is sort of as careful as you can be. Every single step of algebra has given you a sentence that tells you what the step of algebra is doing. That may be overdoing it. Sometimes that's too much annotation. But you, you'll figure that out as you're writing up your assignments. And there's a certainly judgment there of how much to write. But you should be thinking of, how do I explain my calculations? Don't assume I know what your calculations mean. You have to tell me what your calculations mean. Let's do another example. Here's another example about explaining your calculations. How many 15 centimeter wide planks do you need a fence in a square that has area 9 meters squared? Here's a bunch of calculations that again are completely correct. Comes up with the answer 80. 80 is the number of planks that's needed. But these calculations are not a reasonable answer to the question because I have no idea what these calculations are doing. Whoever has written these calculations hasn't told me what they mean. Here's a solution that has the same calculations. Um, but they're also all embedded in terms of writing. And this is much better. This tells me how to think through this problem. I've been given the area. I need to know perimeter. This is a square. The area of the square is the square of the side length. The area is 9 meters squared. Well, 9 is 3 squared, so each side length must be 3 meters. So that's where I get this 3. There are four sides, each of like 3 meters, so the total perimeter has to be 12. But the planks were given in centimeters, so I need to write 12 as 1,200 writing meters in terms of centimeters multiplied by 100. So then I have 1,200 centimeters. Each plank is 15 centimeters. I can just divide to get a total of 80 planks. And this nice, lovely, well-written, or at least reasonably well-written, I don't claim that my writing is perfect, but it's, a, it's full sentences. It's a nice paragraph. It's organized. It tells me what I'm doing. So I sort of went back. It tells me what these four lines actually mean. So these four lines are still the only calculations I'm doing, but now they have context. And that's really what it's about. It's providing context for your calculations so that your reader knows what's going on. I want to do a couple more examples. These are a little bit more straightforward about things that I expect you to do. This is less about annotation. The first one is about approximation. So if I'm finding the roots of a quadratic, and this quadratic needs a quadratic formula, so I use the quadratic formula, I get this answer. These are the exact values, so usually you can just leave it as exact values. If you want to write approximate values, that's fine. Do it using some symbol that indicates approximation. So equals with a dot or equals with a squiggle. These are the two most common approximate equals signs. Use one of them because equals and approximate equals are not the same things. And also, 
tell me where you got these numbers. So using Wolfram Alpha, for example, um, WA being a reasonable abbreviation for Wolfram Alpha or using Desmos or whatever calculation tool you happen to use for this. Tell me where you got these approximate values from. So writing something like this when you have approximate values, very, very nice, very good practice in your assignments. If you do a bunch of approximations throughout your assignments, so here, say for some reason in the, in the path of an assignment, I have to do some approximate values. Um, at the start of the assignment, I might say something like, um, I'll write WA for Wolfram Alpha. And Wolfram Alpha is, is a website that does calculations. So I'll write a sentence like this at the start of my assignment, and then whenever I've used Wolfram Alpha, I'll just make a note sort of after my calculation just to say, well, where did that number came from? Come from that number came come came <laughs> that number came from a computer. And I'm just letting you know that I didn't pull it out of nowhere. I got it from a computer from a calculation website. Um, and again, these are approximate values, so I have a dot equals to indicate those. So those are some examples, not, not examples of all of the points that I've gone over, but some of the salient points that I find are the biggest adjustments for students coming into the University of Mathematics. And hopefully this video's started to give you a bit of an idea of what I expect and why university writing is a different thing from high school writing.